this is incredibly strange for me. You can imagine how weird this is. I graduated 12 years ago and I'm speaking to you right now. This is very bizarre. Is Miss Nix here? I'm having flashbacks. Okay, hey. Uh, class of 2012, uh, this is incredible. Parents, I can't even imagine how proud and how old you must feel right now. So 2012 is not even a real number, but it is, like we're in it. This is the future, we're in the future right now. Very strange. Um, I don't remember who gave the keynote uh, address at my graduation. I think it was a politician, lots of empty statements. I don't remember a thing. Uh, uh, you can do it, Cardoza. What, where are we, Townsend Harris? Oh, okay. My 12th speech I've given. I don't remember which high school I'm in right now. Genuine vote for me, 18. Um, so the bar is low. Um, <laughs> so it's, 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 I'm a weird choice for a keynote speaker. I'm a stand up comedian. Um, Students wanted me to do it, which I appreciate. But I'll be honest with you, if you all told your parents before graduation that you all wanted to be stand-up comedians, <laughs> we'd be engulfed in tears right now. Mm -hmm. Yet, I'm a role model in this moment, which is very bizarre. Um, I have a couple of things, only a couple, because really none of you were thinking, oh, I can't wait for graduation. You were thinking, I can't wait to graduate. So let's speed that up, right? Um, a couple of things. First of all, you know, there's a, there's a cliche, like a cliche, don't forget where you came from. And I think the truth in that is that you need to have distance from where you came from, right? Like, you don't actually know where you came from until you compare it to something else. Um, I realized that when I left Queens for the first time, really. I, I went to college in Maine. Um, in Maine, the, uh, when, you, when you enter Maine, um, the state, there's a sign that says, uh, the way life should be. Uh, and after four years in Maine, I realized that meant cold and white. And <laughs> And it's, it's, an interesting, uh, it's an interesting thing because I didn't know what diversity meant. Like, obviously I know what the word means because I went here, but like, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know what it meant. I couldn't know what it meant. And I kept hearing the word diversity when I went to school in Maine and how there would be a surge of diversity when I got to campus. And I realized I was the surge they were talking about. <laughs> when you grew up with it. You know what I mean? Like, this, look, I'm looking at this audience and it's incredible. Like, I remember, you know, growing up here, going to school here, and, uh, you know, having conversations when you meet people and they ask you where you're from. And so that's the cue, and I, I would say, you know, India, my parents are from India. And you'd ask them and you would hear you know, Korea, or China, or Pakistan, or you know, just all these different countries. And the thing is, even if you asked a person who was white, nobody would say white. People would say Irish, Italian, Polish, I'm Jewish. They'd go over the list of different identities because everybody is from somewhere here. Nobody just says white, that'd be ridiculous. Everyone comes from immigration here and there's, there's an acceptance of it. And I think that's incredible, because when I was in Maine, and people would ask me where I was from, I would say Queens, because I was from here. <laughs> and then they'd be like, stop screwing around, where are you really from? And I'd realize, oh, they want to, okay, I'm like, oh, India. And then I'd ask them where they were from, and I'd hear like, Milton, Wakefield, some other town outside of Boston. And I'm like, oh, you don't know how the game is played. <laughs> but it wasn't that, it's just that they saw me as an outsider. They didn't understand that, like, I was part of this too. We have, we know that we're a part of this. Throughout this country right now, there's a culture war. 
People are afraid of immigrants. They're afraid of diversity. They're afraid of gay people. They're afraid. They're afraid of that. That's not a pro-afraid. That's an anti-afraid, I think. That'd be, that'd be weird if it was like, yes, and we should be afraid of them. <laughs> And you see it, that in Arizona, there was a decision yesterday by the, by the Supreme Court, and they struck down three parts of that terrible SB 1070 law, but there's that one part where police officers are allowed to ask for immigration papers. That's still allowed. I find it stunning, because then they would have to ask every single one of us every single day. In this city, in this city. We know what diversity means, and diversity is an important thing. You hear about it all the time, diversity in schools, diversity in the workplace, people have diversity trainings, cultural competency trainings. We grew up here. You know, there, there, we didn't, you know, train, I think it's still useful to learn, but we had this, this is a given. Do you realize how exceptional that is? I went to school in a place where I knew rich kids. Like real rich kids, like Rockefeller types. Like I went to school with a Rockefeller. I went to school with kids who had like parents with buildings named after them and warships and, and like they would use the word summer as a verb. Where are you going to summer this year? Probably flushing. rich boarding schools. They were trained, as trained as we are, these kids are machines. All right? They went to these boarding schools, they know how to live by themselves, they write these incredible essays because they've been writing them for a lot longer than we have. But you know what the one thing they don't have? They don't have us. They don't have diversity. They don't know what this is like. This is the purest diversity. This isn't forced. This is real diversity. We have people from all over the world, different races, different cultures, different religions, different languages, gay, straight, transgender. Do you realize how incredible people with documents, people without documents? <laughs> that is a big deal. No, we have to acknowledge there are people without documents who are struggling, man. We're all in it together. This is incredible. They don't have this. They have to figure this out. They have to take trainings. <laughs> this is ridiculous what we have. So for those of you who are leaving New York, you're going to understand what I mean when you leave and how incredible this is. And you're going to look at people real confused. And for those of you who are staying in New York or staying in Queens, you're going to realize how incredible this borough is and the city is. And you should discover every inch of it. People die to get here. They want to get to New York so badly, and we're here already. This is exceptional. It's, I know it's a bit long, kid. We're almost there. <laughs> Sorry, that's my first point. All right, my second point. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know it's true. But the, and we we're all, we all have inferiority complexes about Queens. I mean, we refer to Manhattan as the city. They're a fifth of the city. I mean, Spider-Man's from here. <laughs> Forest Hills. And the second point I wanted to make is that we need to take risks, all right? And let's think about this. Who are the famous alums of Townsend Harris, right? Like Jonas Salk, Adam Clayton Powell, Ira Gershwin, those are just, just three names, right? Since 1984, according to Wikipedia, it, it, <laughs> It's, uh, it's me. <laughs> me and uh, Divya Narendra who helped create Facebook, that's it. You're, a stand-up comedian is your most famous alum since 1984. <laughs> Something is wrong. <laughs> Something is, do you realize I shouldn't be the most famous person since 1984 that's gone to this school? Most of you don't even know who I am. That is weird. <laughs> Some of you are looking at me up on your phones right now. Who is this? Why is he relevant to me right now? And I don't know who you all are, right? This is kind of, I'm talking generally because I don't know all of you. It's weird to give advice to people that you don't really know. I, I only remember my experiences as a Townsend Harris student. If I remember right, but well, first of all, like uh, nerd school, right? Same? Yeah, mostly women, right? Still, big, big backpacks, right? Uh, afraid of kids at bound? Right, all right. All right, so, all right, 
same place. All right, same place. All right. And the things I remember about us then uh, is that uh, we were bright, we were studious, we were capable, uh, we were a little gutless, a little anxious, whiny uh, followers, worker bee types. We, we did everything to, to, to get the right answer, but we didn't really care how we got to the right answer. It just had to be right. We just had to get the certificate, we had to get the seal. That's it. That's not gonna work. That's not sustainable. Because you know what happens if that's the way it is for a long time? A stand-up comedian is your most famous in this. <laughs> Where's the innovation? I'm not saying there aren't incredible alums from this college, uh, from this high school. I'm not saying there's not incredible alums who've done incredible things in their communities. But again, I shouldn't be the most famous alum from Townsend Harris since 1984. You all have to go out and do something. You need to take risks. And that could be as small as taking a class you didn't expect to take. That might be doing something outside the norm. Joining a club that you didn't think you were interested in, but just to see what would happen. To meet people, to do community service, just to do community service. Not for a seal, because it's right. There's a lot we need to do. We're privileged. Don't you realize that? And I don't know all your backstories. I don't know all your histories. But you have a high school diploma from a great school in Queens. You're privileged as a result. You have a lot to give back. You have to. It's your responsibility. It's your time. Okay. Next card. <laughs> Um, so yeah, be uncomfortable. I think that's important. I'm a stand-up comic, I fail at least half the time, right? That's a key part of it. You fail to get better, you fail to get back up. And that's what you all have to do. You need to take those risks. You need to put yourself on the line. That's the only way this is going to work, okay? Um, and um, I guess you kind of did, because I was a risk. Uh, you asked me to speak, and uh, I hope that doesn't frighten you from other risks in the future. Um, I'm incredibly proud to be an alum of the school. Um, I'm going to walk off stage, and not because um, I don't want to stay, even though I don't, because it's very long. Um, you know, you guys are ready to take pictures and hug your parents, and I was ways. Um, but it's because I'm on a lunch break and I don't know I'm gone. So, you see Chris Rock, tell him you didn't see me. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much, Town Center's class.